Joining me in the uh, telecast booth uh, for the second half kickoff, doing the play-by-play -play for the third period, will be our third broadcasting partner, Mr. Joe Hyland. Joe, good to have you alongside of me again. It's good to be here, Tom. Good to be here, and welcome back, uh, fans, to the uh, second half of uh, tonight's game between uh, Norristown and William Tennant. As was mentioned earlier on, uh, it, is a, it is a beautiful night for, uh, for high school football. Norristown will be kicking off to start the second half. Uh, William Tennant, uh, frankly, w w with the exception of uh, A.J. Pettigrew's 70-yard burst, the uh, Norristown offense was sputtered a little bit, Tom. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, it, it seems like the penalties just kept it broke their continuity and broke their cohesiveness. And it's going to be interesting to see uh, Giacomo Stabile's kick here, Joe. End over end kick. Picked up by number 34 for William Tennant. Shoved out of bounds around the 32 yard line by the Norristown special team. That was Ken Witter, up and coming sophomore, uh, one of the promising young athletes, Joe, uh, on the Norristown roster. Very encouraging to see A.J. Pettigrew make that tackle. He's back in the game. Oh, that is very encouraging, Joe. As a matter of fact, I missed his presence out there. Uh, did, did he, did he uh, read this? There he is at linebacker. Yep, and he made the tackle on that, uh, on that kickoff. Okay, it's going to be anxious to see his progress in the second half to see if there's any uh, remnants of that injury he sustained in the second period. It's obvious that Dennis Flynn worked his magic. Yep, well, he can do that, and he'll tell you that. Here's DeLello over the ball, 44 in motion. Quick pass to the flat, tackled at about the 32 yard line. Nice pickup of about five, Joe. Receiver on that play was number 10, Anthony Brzezewski. Second down, six yards to go. This is going to be an important drive for Tennant for their confidence uh, coming off that uh, touch, recent touchdown they scored late in the second period. Split backfield, DeLello over the ball. Hand off to number 45. That's Reardon. That's Reardon again. He is a load. He bangs his way across midfield down to the Norristown 47-yard line. Joe, it just seems to me the Tennant, since their touchdown drive, although it was a mini drive, it, it's, it, they're playing with a lot more confidence on both sides of the ball. Yeah. Reardon's a player. And coming into the game, he was supposed to be a blocking fullback for Sonny Flood. Flood's maybe carried the ball three times. Flood being number 44. Maybe the, uh, the tenant coaches, the, the tenant uh, brain trust, sees weaknesses that we don't, Tom. Well, they're the experts. That's right. Here's number 44 Here's Flood. again. Mr. Inside, Sonny Flood, Mr. Inside, Mr. Outside right now. Another significant gain. He's a 5'10", 185 pound senior. Sonny Flood. And he was their top running back last year, Joe, and Tennant finished the, the season seven and five, three and two in their conference with a win over Norristown. As I recall, it was an eight, seven or seven, seven six? six, I seven, six. All right. Split backfield again, Joe. Tennant on the Norristown 42. DeLello over the ball. Split backfield. Here's Reardon around the First right down side. down and then some. Down to the 35-yard line, Joe. Tackle by Rob Coleman for Norristown. First down and 10 yards to go at the... Norristown. That's a 35-yard 35 35 line. line. They've picked up 42 yards, Joe, in five running plays to start the second half. It's like the backs Flood, in an eye. Flood and Reardon in the backfield. That's Reardon banging, banging into the line of scrimmage. Not much of a gain. Norristown stiff in there. Nose guard Jay Arthur, number 45. Although somewhat diminutive, very tough kid on the tackle, Joe. He's a 5'6", 160-pound 
nose guard. Second down, 10 yards to go. No gain on that, on that last play. I think Norristown might be uh, susceptible now to a little play action off those uh, last six runs. Reardon and Flood in the backfield. DeLello over the ball. Straight ahead. Squeezes out about two yards as number 44, Sonny Flood. Let's see, Joe, that time I think I would have gone play action. Now you're third and seven, third and eight. And it's, you know, it's a viable passing situation that the defense can actually look for. I think that, you know, and as an aggressive type coach, I think I would have gone play action there in that last play. Yeah, because now, as you say, Tom, it's third and eight. Norristown's going to be expecting a pass, and, and the, the Norristown defensive secondary, very quick, very quick kids back there. One, six, two, four, three, zero. All right, here's Tennant. Third down, eight yards to go. They shift. Split wide to the left. Straight hand, hand off, off to Reardon. Reardon. He can quite, could quite turn the corner. He's going to come up maybe a yard and a half shy of that first down, Joe. I got to think Tennant's going to go for it, Tom. Absolutely. This is four down territory if there ever was four down territory. I mean, they're close to the 25 yard line. The ball goes in the end zone, they pick up five yards. Fourth and one. Big play here, Tom. Very big play early in the third quarter. Well, the odds makers here would call for a handoff to 45, the power back. Let's see if Tennant uh, tries to put a, a wrinkle in that philosophy. There's that shift, that quick shift. 45 quarterback keeper, and he's got it easily. A big push, Joe, by the line. Absolutely. Squeezed out about four yards on that play. First down. First down and 10 yards to go. This game could get interesting, Tom. If, 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 if Tennant uh, scores a touchdown on an extra point, We've got a barn burner. Yeah, we do. We do. Uh, let's see if, uh, if, they're, if they have enough to take it in. Joe, this would have been, this would have, will be a 77-yard drive if they score. The first significant drive of the game for either team. Number 15 in motion, Steve Catalo. Hand off to Reardon around the right side. Got some room, Joe. Close to a 10-yard pickup down near the 10-yard line. And only one pass, and only one pass on the drive, and that was the first play of the drive, Tom. And there's an injured eagle down on his knee. We can't see his number from here. No. Number 31, I think it's Julius Blackwell, in his, playing in his first ever football game on the high school level as a senior. And as I mentioned numerous times in the first half. Uh, both Jamal, Julius, who's injured right now, hopefully just uh, shaken up a little bit, and Jamal, his brother, twins, uh, probably are the two overall best athletes on the Norristown Eagles squad. Both basketball players, and I wouldn't be surprised if they do a little track in the spring, Tom. Yeah, that's a very good possibility. It seems like he's walking off on the most part under his own power. A little bit of a, a limp in his gait. Something right, tells me Julius will be back. Second down, one yard to go. Ball at the 11, Joe. Here's DeLello. The two horses in the backfield, Reardon and Flood. There's Reardon around the right side again, off right tackle. The ball looked like it squirted out. The officials called the play dead, however, and it's going to be a first down and goal for the Panthers of William Tennant, Joe. And that ball will be Spotted about the five or right outside the five. 
A lot of credit, Tom, has got to go to that uh, tenant offensive line. They're, yeah, they're blowing the Eagles off the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and it's evident watching it from up here. Yep. Oh, a little counter play. That's the first time I've seen that. Eagles reacted well, Tom. They sure did, because that was well executed. All right, no gain on that play. Second down, five yards to go. Ball on the five-yard line. That's a little bit of uh, a Delaware wing T type of misdirection counter, although it was it was not a wing T set. And how about the Blue Hands under new coach beating Georgia Southern? Perennial national power, Division One AA. Yep. One of the most enjoyable offenses to watch is that Delaware wing tip. Absolutely, I agree with you, Joe. Nowhere another, there. Nowhere there. Norristown Eagles swarmed to the ball. Lost about three yards on that play. Well, you Great know, defense in, by the Eagles. They're in that goal line defense, it seems, Joe. And once again, a little misdirection or a little play action you could probably free somebody out here in the left flat wide open. Yep. I'm anxious to see if they go in that route. Third down, five yards to go. Tenant on a grinding, time-consuming kind of a drive. All on the ground. By the time it's over, it'll take up eight minutes of the 12-minute period. Absolutely right, Tommy. Big play, though, here, Joe. Big, big play for both teams. Uh, illegal procedure, number 45, move forward. Yeah, that'll hurt them there, but it might give them a little bit more room to pass the ball. What did you see developing there, Joe, on the play? I saw, I saw, I, I thought they were, they were using number 45, uh, Reardon is a decoy, and they're gonna give it to Flood around the other side. Costly penalty for the Panthers. Yeah, it's going to bring up a uh, goal to go on the 10. I think they're going to throw it, Tom. I, I, I don't think they have any, any choice but to throw it. It's a clever little shift that they use. Confusing. Yeah, he's back to pass. Poorly thrown pass. Delello rolled to his right and, th and threw it to uh, basically a, a patch of grass. Well covered here, too, Joe. That was well defended by the Eagles secondary. Now it looks like they're going to bring in their field goal team. And you know what? If they don't score here, Joe, that could really deflate them. Yeah. Yeah, they got to come away with uh, at least three. And uh, yeah, they've driven 67 yards to this point. Have taken up eight minutes of the of the second of the third quarter. This boy, uh, Mike Donnelly, can boom the ball. Oh, it's a, a fake. fake. Pass, Pass was incomplete. incomplete. I don't disagree with that call, though, Joe. No, neither do I. Number three is down. That's Sammy Johnson. He was rushing the passer on that play. He may have come down on a twisted ankle. All right, Norristown takes over on downs. You know, I don't know, Tom. Uh, as I recall, uh, in the uh, in the pregame exercises, the William Tennant kicker, Mike Donnelly. That was well within his range. Yeah, you're right, Joe. I watched him at the at the scoreboard end of the field, which actually would be the east end of Norristown. That is correct. Not the legitimate east end. There's only one legitimate east end. That's correct. Where Luz is. And Marcy's. And Holy Savior. And Holy Savior. And the MSS Club. That's exactly and, right. And Triple S. Right. And the feasts and Mount Carmel. <laughs> but for directional geographic purposes. Topographically speaking, the school building is the east end of the stadium. And to our left would be, surprisingly, the, the west, west end. end. <laughs> uh, Sammy looks like he's limping. It could have been an ankle. 
could be cramps. These kids get cramps a lot. They have tight muscles. And if they don't dehydrate themselves well enough, they're susceptible to uh, muscle cramps. Even on a cool night like a uh, cool night like this time? Yeah, Joe, I guess. Be, be, because it's it's still a little humid. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's favoring one of the, uh, one of his ankles. Sammy Johnson, a 5'8", 165-pound senior. Sammy's a tough kid. Well, this is important for Norristown to try to rate themselves offensively. They got Pettigrew back in, I believe. Yep. And at the fullback or tailback position. And it's going to be equally important to Tennant. Try to get that ball back and finish that excellent drive they just unfortunately uh, ended. Eagles in the I formation. There's Pettigrew off right tackle. Struggles for about four. Yeah, he got that on his own. He didn't yes, have he great did. blocking there. Yes, he did. One against six. But a point to mention, Joe, Tennant's offense is not explosive to score quickly. Right. So they would have to rely on a Norristown turnover. Norristown if they could sustain the uh, uh, possession of the football here, they'll end the third quarter, and it took uh, it took ten and all of the uh, all of that period to get down in scoring position. Here's Anthony Carmona, I formation. There's a pitch to. It's like Pettigrew. Pettigrew again, struggles for about four. I think he got it. Close enough for a measurement. Well, it's right on that line. You would think if the chain, Joe, is on the other line, they won't have to measure. But I'm not going to complain. There's been no penalties to this point in the third period. Don't jinx it. No, you're right. Yellow flags went up like so many flares in the first half, Tom. Yeah, I talked to Tom Pierantosi, the assistant Norristown coach who's in the press box doing the overhead uh, scouting and relaying information down to Coach Grove. And he said, simply a matter of discipline. Our kids have to watch the ball. And they, you know, if that's all they have to do defensively, watch the ball. Mm -hmm. And if the quarterback and says you go on two, that's exactly, yeah. you go on two. Trust him. Trust that's, him. that's when he wants the ball. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Trust him. All right, first and 10 for the Eagles. Big first down. Here's Pettig Pettigrew again. Reverses his field. Gets another 10 yards. See how valuable he is, Joe, to this Norristown offense. He is. And defense. Got to give Norristown's defense credit there, Joe. They, they bent at that time, yeah. but, but did break. I would think if you're an offensive lineman for uh, Norristown, blocking for a back like Pettigrew is a lot of fun because all you have to do is hold your block a couple of seconds. Just give him a little seam and a little crack, and he's town enough to see it and run to daylight. The name of the book by the great late Vince Lombardi, Run to Daylight. That's right. There's Pettigrew, squirts through, picks up about 12 yards. A.J. Pettigrew starting to Norris, find his legs. Norristown's doing with this possession like Tennant did with theirs. They're finding a hot back and they keep giving him the ball. Speaking of Vince Lombardi, Joe, I'll have to show you. I have a letter that he wrote to Fordham University applying, or actually a, a high school before he, before he coached at Fordham, a letter he wrote in his handwriting, original letter, applying for a job. Is that right? My father got it somehow and handed it over to me. And I did have it authenticated. That is interesting. Vince Lombardi, of course, is one of the seven blocks of granite at Fordham. There goes Pettigrew. There goes Pettigrew. Nobody's going to touch him. Nobody's going to catch, catch him. him. Stumbles into is the it? end zone. Touchdown. Oh, that referee has got it. Yeah. yeah. That's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. A.J. Pettigrew. Over a 50 yards, I believe, Joe. I think you're right. 120 yards and two carries tonight. 
coming back from uh, being shaken up in the in the second hand, second Wh quarter. Whatever Dennis Flynn did, terrific. Dennis has to get some credit for uh, for this victory if Norristown could hold on, which I think right now, tenant style play is not really geared to come back from a three touchdown deficit. Right. right. After missing a scoring opportunity at the other end of the field. Um, they became somewhat deflated, and this may deflate them a little, uh, a little more. Yeah, I'd like to see Norristown convert this PAT. And once again, be, Coach Groves looking at that little sheet of paper that Coach Michaels alluded to in the first half. The cheat sheet. Trying to get the 28, that cheat sheet. All right, here's Carmona. They're going for two. Davey Watson in motion. Carmona. Incomplete pass intended for Bobby Watson. I'm sorry, yeah, Dave Watson, Watson. He is a receiver, and that's a ball a receiver should come up with. All right, with uh, a minute 29 left in the third period, it's Norristown 26, the Panthers of William Tennant 7. Once again, Joe, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Gray Boys Window and Door for the complimentary Norristown Eagles miniature footballs that they throw up after every touchdown. I know They've Tom only thrown them up one game, but the Gray Boys window at door 48, West Germantown Pike, 610-279-3905. One of the prominent window and door businesses in Montgomery County. Speaking for myself, Tom, two of our three doors are Gray Boy doors. They must have the market monopolized, Joe, but Anyway, they have a great reputation, and the Norristown Area School District TV network is very grateful for them providing the opportunity for these young people to have the thrill of a lifetime by receiving one of these balls. I know it's a high point in my lifetime. <laughs> if anybody's interested in buying this telecast, attend your next game. Catch one of these balls, and Joe Island, Bill Michaels will be happy to autograph it for you. All right, here's Giacomo Jimmy Stabile. Stabile. There's number 34 for William Tennant. That would be Chris Charalonzo, 5'8", 155-pound junior, returning the uh, kick. Tenant will take over at about the uh, 30, 31 yard line. Goes Tenet's to, go uh, ahead, excuse Joe, me, Tom. Uh, Tenant's going to have to open it up. They, I mean, they, they, they don't have enough time to grind out three touchdowns. No, they exact, go. That was going to be my exact point. They have to score on this drive, and they can't afford to take off nine minutes of the clock. Right. Because that would leave Norristown with a two touchdown lead with only six minutes to kill. Minute 23 left in the third period. Flood in motion. Delello rolls out. Oh, he got the pass off, and he completed it. What a great comeback catch by that player. Great play. That's number 44. That's number 44, Sonny Flood. And Jamar Arthur, or Jay Arthur, is down. Once again, this is two defensive plays in succession that he rushed the quarterback and is down with an injury. And that's got to be cramps. I would say that's cramps. All right, there's, a, there's an official timeout on the field. Jay Arthur's being worked over. Talk to Joe. Uh, the uh, William Tennant coaching staff must have piped into our feed here because they opened up on the first play of that drive with the 22 yard pass reception. Well, they know that uh, they know football, uh, football geniuses when you know when they That's hear exactly and see right. them, right? right. So, yeah. Most coaches have uh, the feed into their assistants in the press box, but the people in the know somehow technologically can feed into hear the golden voices of authority on the game of Joseph Highland, Esquire.
All right, tenant ball on their own 45-yard line. I, I don't see Arthur sitting on the bench. Here's DeLello, I formation, flood and Reardon, hand off to Reardon, straight ahead. No more than two yards on that play. That's not, that's not going to get the Panthers back into the game, that kind of call. No, it isn't. And uh, I could probably understand trying to sneak a runny, a quick quick hitter on the Norristown defense, but you might want to do that with the more speedier back being Sunny Flood. Here's a handoff to Reardon, knocked back. I don't understand. Unless nice play. They just don't have confidence in the pass blocking. Joe, that play's probably going to wrap up the third quarter. Yep. But before I turn, uh, turn it over to Billy Michaels and yourself for the fourth quarter, again, I want to mention October 5th. October 5th is the Norristown Alumni Association golf outing and picnic at the Westover Golf Club, as you were, the Jeffersonville, much improved Jeffersonville golf course. And uh, $75, and that includes golf, court, prizes, uh, picnic, free gifts, picnic, and I'm sure they'll have uh, plenty of the beverage of your choice. So uh, I encourage all those, only 18 foursomes are going to be ex uh, accepted. So get your tickets for that, help support the Alumni Association. Call Jim Serrator. I don't have the number right off hand here, but call Jim Serratore. He lives on Faith Drive in Norristown, and it is not an unlisted number. No, it should be. Yeah, he's a popular man, but he's such a good man. Uh, and I also want to remind our next telecast will be next Thursday night. They're playing a Thursday night game, I believe in lieu of a Jewish high holiday where they can't play on the weekends. Last year we played a Thursday afternoon game, if I recall. I did it'll not be, know that. It'll be a Thursday 7:30 game against League Power and favorite Soderton. And uh, Soderton knocked off the Eagles last year, so it's going to be a revenge game. So uh, pleasure working with you, Joe. And now I'm going to turn it over to our third member, but number one in your hearts, Billy Michaels. <laughs> 